Hello, Jessica Frost Ballas here from All the Sparkle. Today I'm excited to be guesting for Ellen Hudson. I'll be sharing how to create an ink blended galaxy as a background for a scene with the Essentials by Ellen spaced out set. So let's get started. First, I start by blending splotches of color onto a panel of Strathmore Bristol cardstock. I use Distress Oxides in Mustard Seed, Picked Raspberry, Seedless Preserves, Peacock Feathers, Blueprint Sketch, Chip Sapphire, and Black Soot. As you can see, I just apply colors randomly here and there. Some blend together slightly and others not at all. And just a friendly tip as we get started. Galaxies are one of my favorite things to create, but honestly, they tend to look absolutely awful for 75% of the process. When I first started making galaxies, I threw so many of them away because I didn't think they were going to work. So don't make my mistake. Trust the process in yourself, and I promise you'll be really surprised with how it turns out. And the fun part is that every galaxy is different. You'll never be able to create the same look twice. And you can also go really bright and vibrant like the one I'm creating here, or keep it more moody and muted, totally up to you based on the colors you choose. Anyway, back to our blending. After I apply my vibrant colors, I start to selectively cover some of them up with chip sapphire and black soot. There's no real rhyme or reason to what I cover or I don't cover and how much I add. I just want a varied background with pops of vibrant color peeking out in different amounts throughout the dark blue and black. Also, if you end up with darker colors on your lighter blending foams, you can just blend them out on a piece of scrap paper until the dark color is gone. Once I'm done blending, I set the ink with my heat gun. If I left the panel damp, my splatters would be much more subtle, and I'm definitely not going for subtle here. So once the panel is dry, I add splatters with my Ranger Distress Sprayer bottle and my Hero Arts spray bottle. The Ranger bottle allows for much bigger droplets, while the Hero Arts bottle applies a very fine, even spray. Both are great for creating dimension in your galaxy. I briefly dry them and then blot off the excess water with a paper towel to create lighter spots. Next I place my panel in an overspray box and spritz it with Avery L Shimmer Spray. This also lightens the panel but creates a soft shimmer across the entire panel. Again I dry it and blot it with a paper towel between each layer. Next, I want a brighter metallic, so I add a few splatters of Hero Arts Gold Metallic Glimmer Paint. I let this dry completely before moving on to my next layer. I want to add a little more dark black into my galaxy, so I apply a little black soot Distress Oxide Reinker to an acrylic block, add a drop of water, and splatter that onto my panel with a paintbrush. This tends to take a little longer to dry, so I set it aside while I work on the rest of my card. While my panel is drying, I stamp the images from spaced out onto white cardstock with VersaFine and heat emboss them with clear embossing powder. Next, color the images with Copic markers. 
For my Planets and Alien, I stick to vibrant colors that are similar in shade to the Distress Oxide inks I used for my background. After I finished coloring, I realized that my panel was dry, so I took a break from that to continue working on the galaxy. My last step is to splatter the panel thoroughly with Copic Opaque White to create bright stars. I vary the size of the splatters by adding more or less paint to my brush before splattering. This also tends to take a while to dry, so I set it aside and then die cut my Copic colored images with the coordinating dies. Since my galaxy is darker, I didn't want the bright white edges of the die cuts to take the focus away, so I used a black Copic marker to go over the edges. This helps the images blend better with the background. I also cut my alien in half and glued him into the spaceship. Next, I laid out my scene on the galaxy background and decided to create an interactive card. So I die cut the galaxy background with a lawn fawn slide out over slider die. Then I took a piece of black cardstock cut to 4 by 5 and a quarter 
and placed it behind the galaxy background. I carefully inlaid the slider piece and adhered it in place. This way it will be visible when the UFO is sliding back and forth and create a more seamless look. I also die cut another UFO from black cardstock to use as the backer for my slider. I placed the UFO on one side of the slider and then added two foam dots to the UFO. I removed the adhesive backing and adhered the black UFO to the foam dots. This ensures the UFO will slide back and forth without falling out. I also used two foam dots so the UFO would slide instead of spinning in a circle. Next I applied a double layer of foam mounting tape to the back of the galaxy panel and carefully adhered it to my black cardstock. I had to move my head over my desk to see better so I've cut out a little footage here as I get it adhered. Once the interactive piece is in place, I adhere the rest of the images to my card. I stamped the sentiment from spaced out on white cardstock, trimmed it down to a thin label, and adhered it with foam mounting tape. And then I thought I was done. But the more I looked at the panel, I decided it needed something a little more. So I decided to add the sun. I started by die cutting a large circle from a scrap of white cardstock. Then I blended mustard seed distress oxide ink over the circle. Next, I carefully used a craft pick to remove the smallest planet from the top left. As you can see, it pulled up some of the background, but I wasn't too worried because I knew it would be covered by the new sun. I adhered my sun to the corner, making sure the UFO would still move freely, and then trimmed off the excess. Then I added my little planet back to my scene. Next, I added Nouveau Crystal Glaze to my UFO and planets, and a thick layer of Spectrum Noir Clear Sparkle to the alien sun and planets to finish my card. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed my Galaxy tutorial and I really hope you'll give it a try. Remember to just be patient and let the layers come together. I bet some of you thought that I was just making a hot mess for half the video. But see, it really does turn out in the end. Thanks so much for watching, have a fantastic day and happy crafting. Bye!